Number 20, letter A. If the spring stretches 0.25 meters while supporting an 8 kilogram child, what is its spring constant? All right. So basically, whenever you have a problem like this, wherever you feel like the spring is in equilibrium right now, um, basically there's a child on it, the spring is stretching 0.25 meters, and we're assuming that it's not in simple harmonic motion, right? There is no motion, it's just static. The best thing to do would be then to try to detail a free body diagram, all right? I mean, first thing is you could draw like a little simple picture, like pretend that you have, you know, a spring here, and, um, you know, there's a child hanging from it. I, I don't I don't think they would be particularly happy like this. Um, but, you know, you have something like this picture, and, you know, the this child has a mass of 8 kilograms, and the spring has a certain stretch, right? The spring stretches 0.25 meters. Now, what does it mean to stretch 0.25 meters? Does that mean that this whole length is 0.25? Well, not exactly. It basically means that let's assume that this was the initial length unstrained before the child got on. And then when the child got on, the length now became, it stretched by 0.25 meters, okay? That's telling you something. That's basically the delta X, right? Or the delta Y, I can call it. It doesn't matter. I can call it delta whatever. Um, but the change in distance now from its, or change in displacement from its initial state or its unstrained state to now its strained state is going to be 0.25. And we can plug that in as a negative because the child is, uh, well, I, I guess the, the spring could also be supporting the child in the other way, right? That would probably make a little more sense instead of having... Uh, this type of picture, but, um, you know, uh, we'll, we'll go with it. So here, um, what we realize now is that we have to, so, okay, so now that we have this person or this child at an equilibrium position, the best thing to do is to try to detail a free body diagram, all right, of this particular scenario. So if I were to draw my axes, the origin here, right, represents, I could say this point right here. And now I know that there's going to be two things going on, right? The child has weight. So the child, the gravity is pulling down on the child, right? So this would be the weight of the child. But if the child is not moving anywhere, right? If, it, it's, if the child is just stationary, then what do we know is true? We know that this free body diagram isn't complete, right? Because if it only has one force pointing down, well, there's an acceleration and their movement, right? Basically. So you know that there has to be some balanced force. So what is that balanced force? Well, the balanced force is then the force that the spring applies. So we know that these two are equal but opposite. When we do the math, we can come up with this relationship that the force that the spring exerts on the child would be equal to the weight of the child, okay? So now, that's basically the key insight here. So, again, they tell us the stretch of the spring, right? They tell us the mass of the child, and now we have to find the spring constant. So... I'm thinking about, well, how is spring constant related to amount of stretching? I know that I'm going to be, you know, in these two formulas, one of the two formulas, Hooke's Law or the potential energy formula for a spring, I'm going to use Hooke's Law because I basically have a relationship between the force of the string and the weight of the child. That's kind of the key. So the force that the spring exerts on the child will be equal to negative spring constant multiplied by the change in displacement or the stretch amount, all right, uh, of the spring. So now force that the spring exerts was equal to the mass of the child times gravity is equal because it was equal to the weight of the child, right? Is equal to the negative K delta X. And now I got to solve for K. So simply just divide out the negative delta X. So this is mass of the child times gravity divided by negative delta X. And I can plug in the negative sign at the top. It really doesn't matter. And that's going to be equal to now the spring constant. Now, when you plug everything in, just be careful. Okay. Because the way I organize it, the K should be positive. So if you get a negative answer, most likely you just futzed up the sign a little bit. No big deal, all right? And so on a problem like this, there's no addition, no multiplication, so don't go crazy. Um, you know, just make sure the K is positive. But the signs would work out based on my picture. If you chose to show it the other way, that would make more sense that the child is standing on a spring um, instead of hanging from a spring. Uh, then what you would have realized is that the negative here would have not canceled out but the force then of the child would have been in the negative direction, okay? So that should hope, so 
that should hopefully kind of make sense. Anyway, just plug in the values and just get a positive answer. That's basically uh, that's basically the long and short of that one. So the mass of the child they told us was eight uh, eight kilograms. The gravity is nine point eight times then, and that's negative. Divided by then, sorry, the change in displacement, and we know that it's negative because of the way I oriented my picture. So this is going to be negative 0 0.25, and that's equal to k. So, okay, let's just calculate. So it's it's going to be 8 times 9.8 divided by 0.25, and we get a positive answer of about 314. So 314 newtons per meter, and that's equal to the spring constant. All right, that takes care of that. So that is for letter A. Letter A. Letter B, what is the time for one complete bounce uh, of this child? Okay, so now we have to find the time of one complete bounce. Now you might say, well, wait a minute, time? Time for one complete bounce? Where is that over here in the formulas? We have to, we have to take this information and kind of restate it there. The time for one complete bounce, in the prior problems, this is why I try to say what frequency is or what period is. Oop, I gave you a little spoiler alert, right? Spoiler alert. So... The, the time for one complete bounce is known as the period, okay? They're basically saying, what is the period of this child? That's what period is. It's the time for one complete bounce. The frequency, then, is basically the inverse of that. So I don't know why I wrote P there. It should be a T, but, you know, it's physics. So basically now what I can do is, or what I can also state here is, what is the frequency, right? In other words, how, how is the frequency worded? Well, the frequency, if I were to word it in words, I guess, uh, the frequency would be the time, the t total number of oscillations or bounces or cycles or wavelengths or whatever you want to call it. Uh, it'll, be the, it'll be the number of cycles per second, right? This is the time per bounce or per cycle. The frequency is just the opposite. It's going to be the number of bounces per time, per second. All right? So basically, the problem is asking me for period. Now, how can I relate period to force constant? Well, it's over here in the formula for simple harmonic motion. That the period will be equal to 2 pi times now the square root of the mass that is oscillating divided by the spring constant. So all I now need to do is just plug it in, right? This is going to be 2 pi times then the square root of the mass, which the child is 8 kilograms. By the way, do we know that I, I just, I think it was, I think it was the one I just did, 19. I can't even remember anymore. But remember in the, the, I think it was the one prior that we had to add the masses together, right? And you might be saying, well, doesn't the mass, isn't, doesn't the spring have a mass now? Well, it does, right? It does, but we don't know what it is, okay? So we're not going to add anything to it and whatnot. Also, they told us some information about how much the spring will be stretching and so on and so forth. So we kind of took that into account when we talked about this uh, force constant anyway. But we're, we're, we're assuming that the spring, that the weight of the spring is negligible. Why? Because they didn't tell us anything about it. All right. I know that's a little tough because it's like, how do I know to make the assumption? How do I know I can't, I shouldn't find it? That's where a lot of practice comes in. You have to do a lot of practice, see a lot of problems, and you kind of then understand uh, by doing that, you kind of understand what you should know and what you shouldn't know, or what you can know and what you just can't know, all right? Anyway, spring constant is going to be 314, so I'll just plug that on in. So this is going to be 2 pi times in the square root of 8 divided by, I'm going to use the exact answer, 313.6. So this is basically 1, right? So this is 1 second. So one complete bounce takes exactly one second. Well, that's great. Okay, so I mean, that's that's letter B. That's the period. Letter C, what is the child's maximum velocity if the amplitude of her bounce is 0.2 meters? All right, so in another problem, we had to use this formula that the V max or the maximum velocity will be equal to the square root. I'm actually gonna reorganize this because I'm using this formula over here on the right-hand side, but I'm going to reorganize it. I, I just don't... So it's going to V max is equal to the amplitude multiplied then by the square root of the spring constant divided by M. All right, the big X in the formula there is amplitude. So just know this formula instead. I, I think this, because, you know, knowing big X versus little X, it's, it could get a little confusing. You might plug in, you know, it, it what they're saying is true, but I, I'd, I'd rather you plug in A there. Anyway, um, so why don't we uh, calculate this now? Because we can just plug everything in. 
right? V max is equal to the amplitude. They told us what that is, 0.2. So that's great, times the square root of the force constant. We know what that is, that's about 314. Divided by then the mass. Well, what's the mass that's oscillating? The eight kilogram child. So literally, this one's just plug in. So this is going to be 0.2 multiplied by now square root of, I'll take that exact value, divided by eight. And here we go, it's about 1.25 1 1 meters per second. So that's the maximum velocity that the child can obtain on the spring, on this type of spring. Voila. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. Please help us out and subscribe. All right. Thank you very much. Take care.